I bring you greetings today from the wonderful saints in the British Isles and Africa. They send their love to each one of you, and especially to President Kimball and these great brethren here on the stand. It's been inspiring to feel the Spirit of the Lord brooding over these nations, to feel, ex it's, uh, to feel the new levels of dedication and commitment in the hearts of faithful members of the Church, many of whom are newly baptized members. And I'd like to say to you, wonderful parents, I bring you greetings from the 2,000 missionaries who are serving in these lands, and also to the sons and daughters and families of these devoted couples who are serving there. We thank you for all that you are doing to sustain them in these lands. The sacrifices you make that they can serve, the encouraging letters you write each week, and the faith-filled prayers you offer each night and morning in their behalf. Yes, missionary work is a family work. It's a great time to live when the gospel of Jesus Christ is on the earth. It has miraculous power to change hearts and give purpose and new meaning to lives just as you've heard Elder Cuthbert speak here today. And to you wonderful friends now who are outside in the listening audience, who are not yet members of this great church, I hope you can feel our love for you. We are children of our Father in Heaven. We are brothers and sisters. The inspired words of a primary song speak this great truth. I am a child of God, and He has sent me here, has given me an earthly home with parents kind and dear. We love each one of you. We love you enough that we know you'll not be offended as we speak plainly to you, because love does not offend. We have this message today for each one of you that the authority of God has been restored in the earth and that His Church has been reestablished. I testify to you of the truth of this fact, but you do not have to take my word for it. You can know for yourselves. Those who are seeking and will humble themselves and reach up to our Father in Heaven in prayer, you can know for a surety whether or not it's the truth, and to assist you in your search for the way, our Heavenly Father has caused a marvelous record to be brought forth in our day. It's a record of His dealings with the people who lived on the Western Hemisphere. And like the Bible, it's a sacred record. It's called the Book of Mormon. It was translated by the gift and power of God from a record engraved on golden plates. This sacred book, unlike other books, has a promise. It says, and you can find this promise on page 520 in this volume, and when you shall receive these things, I would exhort you that you ask God, the Eternal Father, in the name of Christ, if these things are not true. And if you shall ask with a sincere heart, with real intent, Having faith in Christ, He will manifest the truth of it unto you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Literally thousands upon thousands have tested this promise and have found it to be true. They have received a witness. It has brought new meaning, added purpose into their lives. Yes, you can know for yourselves, but you should also know that once you have had this witness from the Spirit, you are then under obligation, sacred obligation, to testify of it to others. And now, to those of us who are members of this great Church, these are days of great missionary service. Over 30,000 young men and women, together with devoted couples, are carrying this message to many nations and many lands. Never before in this dispensation has such a worldwide effort been made to reach every soul in the earth. It is great 
and we are mindful of the time and means which you and many others have so willingly given to this purpose. But as great as our effort has been, it is still far, far from being enough. If we're going to carry this message to every land, every nation, every people, every soul, as our great missionary prophet has directed us, there is still one part of this vital missionary force that has not been awakened. It's like a sleeping giant awaiting to be aroused. When this sleeping giant is fully awakened, the day of the sickle will have come to an end, and the day of the combine will come in. The harvest will be in millions in place of thousands, as we're now doing. The great need today in missionary work is to have all the members, every member, those who bear his name, those who have had a witness, pull aside the curtains of fear and reach out in love to our friends and relatives and neighbors and let them know that we really care about them and warm them with our love and that they may know that we really do care, that they are our brothers and sisters, that they too may enjoy these great blessings. When we were baptized, we entered into a covenant with the Lord. And I quote from Mosiah, for this covenant, we stand as witnesses of God at all times and in all things and in all places that we might be in even unto death. Now a silent witness is of not much value. The Lord has said, and it becometh every man that hath been warned to warn his neighbor. Therefore they are left without excuse, and their sins are upon their own head. He has also said to us as members of the church, But with some I am not well pleased, for they will not open their mouths, but they hide the talent which I have given them <coughs> because <coughs> of the fear of man. Woe unto such, for mine anger is kindled against them. Open your mouths, and they shall be filled. Yea, open your mouths, and spare not, and you shall be laden with many sheaves upon your back. For lo, I am with you. Yea, open your mouths, and they shall be filled, saying, Repent, repent, and prepare you the way of the Lord, and make his paths straight, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then speaking to members of the church in another revelation, the Lord has said about these who would, are members of the church who would not be in the celestial kingdom, but have to be satisfied to be in the terrestrial kingdom. And I quote from the 76th section in the 79th verse, These are they, members of the church, who are not valiant in the testimony of Jesus, wherefore they obtain not the crown over the kingdom of our God. And Mark also recorded the Savior's work words in his day, Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the, his glory, in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And I'd like to tell you that a person is never nearer the Lord than when he's reaching out, Savior-like, to bring another soul to Christ. The words of the poet Whittier say this truth. The gates of heaven are closed to he who comes alone. Bring thou another soul, and thereby save thy own. I might ask you this question. Do you have a ledger in which to account for your stocks and bonds and holdings? Many successful men do. On several occasions, men came to Joseph Smith the prophet and asked him to inquire of the Lord of that which would be of most worth to them. And each time the answer came back, that which will be of most worth to you will be to declare repentance unto this people that you may bring souls unto me, that ye may rest with them in the kingdom of my Father. Do we keep a missionary ledger where we might record that which will be of most worth to us? You, it might, you might be interested in this idea. It might help you too. We have a family missionary ledger. It's just an ordinary ledger on which we have placed a picture of the risen Christ saying to his prophet, President Kimball, feed my sheep. We have placed President Kimball's picture there and our picture below it with his words saying, lengthen your stride, do it now. 
And then I've placed my comments there. If it is to be, it's up to me, which means I need to do something about it now. In this ledger, we are listing the names of wonderful we people we meet in our regular course of life who haven't yet become members of the church. Under each name, we record the date we met them and what we did. Just for an example, let me show you how easy it is. Let me tell you about the name of William and May Brown. In January 1979, when we first arrived in England, there was an unusual amount of snow. We had no snow shovel. There were none for sale. I tried to sweep the snow, but it was too heavy. Philip Brown, a young man and his friend, came along and asked if they could clear our yard. They did a nice job. Sister Reeve called Philip Brown's mother to ask him if he could come and clean the yard again and to tell her what a good job her son had done for us. Mrs. Brown said, why don't you come over to our house and have some coffee and get acquainted with the neighbors? Well, Sister Eve went, but she had orange juice, and of course that gave an opportunity to tell them why we were Mormons. Sister Brown said, I've met some of your missionaries. They're surely a fine group of young men. If I were going to change churches, I'd join your church. On February 19th, our wedding anniversary, we didn't have anyone to share it with, and so we thought, why don't we call William and Mary? So we called them and said, won't you come over and help share and keep this anniversary with us? Just, we've had just one pleasant experience after another. They have a Book of Mormon, an LDS hymn book. Mrs. Brown plays the organ in her church. We send them cards as we travel. They are fine people. We're keeping in touch with them. They are good friends. We haven't set any special time now for this missionary work. Just, but we just look for opportunities with everyone we meet. And in this short time, would you believe it, we have 29 names in our ledger. Three of these have been baptized, and a fourth was to be baptized on October 3rd. And others are being taught by the missionaries. When missionaries tracked, would you believe this, in England they have to knock on 3,000 doors to get one person to listen. That means that 90% plus of their time is spent finding. Can you imagine what would happen if every family in the church were to pull aside the curtain of fear and decide to reach out in love and friendship to their neighbors and friends? Not only would the harvest be great, but each family who participated in the process would share in the great blessings of missionary work. And I want to tell you that the Lord has promised great blessings to those who share this gospel. In the fourth section, he says, He that thrusteth in his sickle with his might, now that means with some muscle, the same layeth up in store that he perisheth not, but bringeth salvation unto his own soul. And any man, and that's any man now, that goes and preaches this gospel of the kingdom, and fail not to continue faithful in all things, shall not be weary in mind, neither darkened, neither in body, limb, nor joint, and a hair of his head shall not fall to the ground unnoticed, and they shall not go hungry, neither a thirst. My, what a marvelous promise. And then he also says, And whoso receiveth you, there will I be also. For I will go before your face. I'll be on your right hand and on your left hand. And my spirit will be in your heart and mine angels round about you to bear you up. So today, brethren, I'd say to you, stake presents and bishops, if you really want to sanctify your people, if you want to strengthen your wards and stakes, you lead and involve them in missionary work. Every young man should be prepared to fill a mission. They get 50 years of spiritual training on a mission. It's the greatest thing that can come to a young man. And every family should be a friendshiping family. And I say to you fathers, if you really want to bless your family, if you want to strengthen them in these days, Help your family to be a friendshiping family. I witness to you that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, our Savior and Redeemer. And he speaks to us today through his prophet, President Kimball. I pray God to bless us that we might have the missionary spirit come into our hearts, that we might reach out and give to those who do not have the great blessings that we have. Remember now that Christ has no hands but our hands and no voice but our voice to do his work today. And I witness to you it pays the greatest dividends and I say this to you in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. 
Amen.